we're going to have section two, compounders. Today we will talk about how compounders are made and what property they have and so much more about compounders. So remember we have two different types of matter, pure versus mixture. Today we are not going to deal with mixture, we are only going to deal with pure compounders. Now pure compounders are broken down into elements and compounders. Elements are just one kind of atom, so if I got a bunch of atoms that are all exactly the same, that's an element. Now compounders, I can have different elements that are bounded together. So a compound is a pure substance composed of two or more elements that are chemically combined. And you know the compounders are totally different from the element that make it up. Most of the substances you see every day are compounders. For example, table salt is made of sodium and chloride. See, it has two different elements. So it's a compound. Water is hydrogen and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is carbon and oxygen. They are made of two different elements. Whereas we have sugar. Sugar is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Three different elements. And baking soda is made of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. These are all compounders. Now, did you know that recipes for bread or other baked goods are recipes for chemical reactions? Any change to the ingredients or the ratio of ingredients will lead your recipe for a loaf of bread to come out as dough brick. Baking is chemistry and it makes sense that ratios are important in chemical formulas for compounders. Let's dig deeper into chemical ratios and see what we can figure out. Ratio is a way to compare quantities of things. Now, an average human head has two eyes, one nose, one mouth. So you would say that the ratio is two to one to one. Chemical compounders have fixed ratios too. What happens if a sample of a compound has different ratio? Then the compound cannot be the same. It will be another compound. For example, we have water with the formula H2O and hydrogen peroxide with the formula of H2O2. The ratio of element is, is 2 moles of hydrogen to 1 mole of oxygen. So the ratio is 2 to 1. In hydrogen peroxide, the ratio, however, is 2 to 2, which will be simplified into 1 to 1. So the ratio is different, and so the compounders are different. One number of makes a big difference. Water is essential for life, while hydrogen peroxide is used as a bleach, and has even been used in rocket fuel. As we mentioned before, the properties of compounders are completely different from the elements that make it up. So uh, the properties include physical properties, such as melting point, density, and color. Also, chemical properties like reactivity with acid. For example, we have calcium carbonate found in chalk. It reacts with acid. All the compounds such as hydrogen peroxide react when exposed to light. So basically, these properties differ in compounds. For example, we have sodium chloride, table salt, which is made of two very dangerous elements, sodium and chlorine. Sodium reacts violently with water. Chlorine is a poisonous gas. But when combining, these elements form a harmless compound with a unique property. Sodium chloride is safe to eat and it also dissolves in water without exploding. So as you see, the properties of salt is completely different from sodium and chlorine. So compounds can be broken into the element that they were made of. But in which way? Basically, the only way to break down a compound is through a chemical change. Since the compounds are formed chemically, so it's the only way to break them down. And you know the chemical changes need energy. So there is two ways to add energy to break down a compound. It's either by applying heat or applying electric current. Because heat and electric current are forms of energy. For example, the compound mercury 2 oxide, when you heat it, 
it breaks down into elements, mercury and oxygen, as shown in this picture. Some of the compounds that are essential for our daily life are often not found in nature. So often these compounds must be broken down to provide element or all the compounds that can be used as raw material. For example, we have aluminum. Aluminum is used in cans and airplanes. But aluminum is not found alone in nature. To obtain aluminum, we have to break down the compound aluminum oxide. Ammonia is another important compound used in industry. It's used to make fertilizers and it's made by combining the elements nitrogen and hydrogen. About all the compounds that could be found in nature, we have nitrogen. Plants use nitrogen compounds that are found in soil. Animals get the nitrogen they need by eating plants or by eating animals that have eaten plants. The protein in the food are broken down as animals digest the food. The simple compounds that form are used by animal cells to make new proteins. Another compound that play an important role in life is carbon dioxide that was made in your body. Plants take in carbon dioxide, which is used in photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, plants make compounds called carbohydrate. Carbohydrate can then be broken down for energy through all the chemical changes by plants and animals. That's it for today, guys. Don't forget to answer the self-check question and do the section review as well. And feel free to ask any question regarding the lesson. Good luck. Goodbye.